and he's gonna talk about walking in love, right? And so I thought, man, I wanna hear some of this other wild stuff, you know, and great revelation. So he started teaching on walking in love. The Lord said, if you'll pay attention, he said, I'll show you some things about it. And if you'll grow in this area, I'll show you some things about it because your faith and your love must grow together. It's now time for Mark Hankins. Mark and Trina train and equip leaders in every nation through church services, leadership conferences, mission trips, and media. Get ready for a direct and joyful message about how to grow in your faith and learn more about who you are in Christ. Now, let's join Mark and Trina. Probably one of the greatest lessons that I learned from Kenneth E. Hagan, from Dad Hagan, and of course from Brother Copeland, and of course from my mama. <laughs> and uh, this lesson today is going to be on the love of God, on the God kind of love. And uh, if you have your Bible open to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and we're going to do a study on the God kind of love. And uh, of course, Dad Hagen has a book called Love, the Way to Victory. Love, the Way to Victory. And he got that title from 1 Corinthians 13 where it says, Love Never Fails. So he's talking there about the God kind of love. He said it never fails or it always wins or that's where your success is, is walking in the God kind of love. So Dad Hagen's book on love, the way to victory, I encourage everybody to read that. And I'm sure Brother Copeland has a book on the love of God. Uh, many years ago, I heard him teach on the love of God, seemed like every week for about two or three years. I thought he had run out of sermon material and he kept talking about love. Then I found out how much I needed to know about it. <laughs> Amen. It literally keep you alive. So there's great books on that. But this morning, I'm also going to use a little book uh, called The Greatest Thing in the World by Henry Drummond. Greatest Thing in the World by Henry Drummond. And you can find this book online. I don't know. We may have some at our office. But this is a real tiny little book. The Greatest Thing in the World and it's called Walking in Love, and it's simply a study of 1 Corinthians 13. So I'm going to go through this book and what Henry Drummond has to say about it and uh, just kind of understand maybe who Henry Drummond is or was. Uh, Henry Drummond was a Scottish evangelist and a lecturer born in Stirling, Scotland in 1851 and an educator at the uh, Edinburgh University as a geologist and explorer, a scientist, uh, scientific expedition. And as a Christian, he combined his knowledge of science and his understanding of the Creator. And Dwight L. Moody heard him teach this message, encouraged him to put it in a book, and has become a classic, you know, since the late 1800s called The Greatest Thing in the World by Henry Drummond. So I don't have it. You can get it. Actually, I must be honest. The first time I read it, uh, I was a young, young uh, preacher. And when I read it, I, I thought, this is impossible. <laughs> <laughs> The first time I read it, I must be honest, I went, this is impossible. And I literally threw it across the room. Because <clears throat> I obviously thought there are other things that were much more important. And so many times I'd go hear Dad Hagen. Of course, Dad Hagen taught a lot about faith and taught me a lot about faith. You know, I uh, heard him preach since I was eight years old. But I didn't start paying attention until I was 17, right after my dad and mom came and got me out of jail. So I figured it'd be a good time to start paying attention. So as a preacher's kid, <laughs> as a preacher's kid, I have a great place in my heart for all preacher's kids. But as a preacher's kid, you know, they say they have special problems, I always say, because they hang out with deacon's kids. Then I have a good friend uh, named Minister, and he's a, he's a rapping 
rapping Christian artist and does some great rapping songs. And man, he's got tattoos all over him. He's dressed like the inner city. And so he comes to our meetings and I have him do some stuff just to stir up the young people. And, and uh, my daddy said, my job is to comfort the afflicted and to afflict the comforted. <laughs> so I bring menace in to stir up a few people. Of course, my dad always said, don't stir up more devils than you can cast out. So, <clears throat> but <laughs> I have done that on occasion. But anyway, so my, so minister come in, boy, he raps some great songs. He's jumping all over the platform and stuff. And, uh, but great, great words. And so he always liked to tell his testimony. He'll say things like, I was raised in the inner city. He said, you know, my mama was a prostitute and a drug dealer, and my daddy was never there, and I was raised in the bars. And he goes on and on. He said, and I was drug addict, drug dealer, rested, went to jail. And so after he gets up, I says, oh, that ain't nothing, minister. I was raised in church. <laughs> in church, they'll kill you and say God told them to do it. So I said, I said, it's, it's it's a lot rougher. Have you ever tried to survive in the nursery of the church? I mean, you can get bitten and stuff like that. And man, the youth group and people coming to your church and leaving, it's a very disappointing thing to be a preacher's kid. And so, Dad Hagen would teach on this subject of the God kind of love and my mom helped me tremendously in this area concerning the God kind of love. Because as a preacher's kid, I probably would have killed somebody by now. But uh, the love of God, I'd go hear Dad Hagen. I want to hear him teach on faith. And many times, great revelation on faith, things I learned about faith. And then he would surprise me and preach on love. And as he got older, he would actually preach more on the God kind of love as he got older. And then one of his last sermons at his camp meeting was a classic message on 1 Corinthians 13. And so when he'd go to preach on love, I can remember sitting there in the uh, minister section and uh, he started preaching on walking in love. <laughs> and uh, I can remember my thoughts going like, oh. My Lord, here's a man who had seven visions of Jesus, and I want to hear these deep mysteries and revelations, and he's going to talk about walking in love, right? And so I thought, man, I want to hear some of this other wild stuff, you know, and great revelation. So he started teaching on walking in love. The Lord said, if you'll pay attention, he said, I'll show you some things about it, and if you'll grow in this area, I'll show you some things about it, because your faith and your love must grow together. Yes. Amen. So we're going to start off with this. And, and actually at the end of Dad Hagen's sermon, he said, uh, he said, now we're going to walk in love. We're going to be quick to forgive. He said, if you want to receive from God, you must be quick to repent. When you know you're wrong, just say, Lord, I missed it. I'm wrong. And then you must be quick to forgive that you don't hold grudges and quick to believe. Quick to forgive, quick to believe if you want to receive from God. Amen. So at the end of his sermon, he said, now, um, I want to pray for anybody here that you have unforgiveness in your life. <laughs> oh. And so he said, I want you to stand up. I said, I'm in a minister section. I'm not going to stand up. <laughs> right? Pride, huh? So he said, stand up if you have unforgiveness, because he had read Mark 11, 23, 24, you know, have faith in God. And then he said in verse 25, and when you stand praying, forgive if you have aught against any. Notice he didn't say if you have aught against many. <laughs> he said aught against any. So that means any aught. You know what the word aught means? That means there's things you, pe you think people ought to have done <laughs> or ought not to have done. He said, if you're holding ought against any, he said, when you stand praying, forgive. He said, and if you will forgive, then that's really the only hindrance that's mentioned to your faith not working right is unforgiveness. So that'd be the first place you'd have to examine. So he said, you can forgive just while you're standing there. Well, I didn't have ought against many. But I did have odd against any. 
right? So any aught's going to, your, your faith won't work effectively or productively the way it should if you have any aught, right? So he said, I want you to stand up. Well, I thought, well, Lord, you know that's really not my problem. <laughs> but if the wrong person's name was brought up, now, you didn't necessarily have to say nothing. You just had to look at people like, that means I don't care for this person, right? So I had a little ought, you know, and there's a rich man that had left our church, and so I had some ought because he went around saying a few things and asked the Lord, you know, I would really like to whoop him. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that I could, but even if I couldn't, I think I would enjoy the fight. <laughs> oh. And so that man's name flashed in front of me. The Lord said, you'll have to forgive him, right? You'll have to forgive and let that go. So I thought if I had a can of alt remover, <laughs> let's try this out over here. If I had a can of alt remover, come on, when people were wanting to receive a miracle or receive their healing, if I had a can of alt remover, I could spray them down. Whoo, miracles would just pop everywhere if I just... I remember John Osteen saying this uh, at Brother Hagin's camping. John Osteen said, uh, he said, Lord, I would have loved to have heard one of your healing sermons. Y'all remember him saying that? He said, Lord, I would love to have heard one of your healing sermons. He said, because when you preached, everybody there got healed. I'd love to have heard that healing sermon. He said, and Jesus said, well, it's right there. He said, where is it? He said, Matthew chapter 5, love your enemies. Bless those that curse you. Pray for those that despitefully use you. He said, if you'll do that, you'll get healed. <laughs> anyway, so Dad Hagen said, now, uh, if you have aught, unforgiveness, so why don't you stand up? Well, here I was praying, love the Lord. Come on, I love the Lord, right? Serving the Lord. Actually, in my giving, uh, Trent and I have been practicing 30% giving since we first got married. That means we'd give 10% tithe, give another 10% offering, give another 10% to missions. My hands would break out in a sweat every Sunday. <laughs> had two little babies come along, did not have Obamacare. And so, I mean, <laughs> I had to pay for everything, right? And so my hands would break out in a sweat while I'm giving 30%. And yet, I wasn't getting the harvest that I thought the Word of God promised, right? So Dad Hagen said, if you'll forgive, you'll find out that it'll come a great turnaround and the glory of God and the blessing of God will come and the, the provision will come. So he said, I want you to stand up if you need to forgive. So I stood up. I said, this is killing me. In front of thousands of people, I have to stand up because I have a problem with unforgiveness. <laughs> Because I grew up a middle child. That means I don't get even, I get ahead. <laughs> and we will find an equalizer. <laughs> that older brother, right? <laughs> and so he said, Stamp. so I stood up. He made us go through this prayer, if you'll forgive. And so simply by faith, I made that confession. I freely forgive. Come on, I command that, that unforgiveness. To be removed. You notice when uh, Jesus said, say to the sick of mine tree. Somebody said, if you're sick of yours, I'm sick of mine. <laughs> Go on, Luke chapter 17. Say to, he says, say to the mountain, Mark 11, 23. Luke 17, he says, say to the sick of mine tree. Amen. So I, I heard Rick Renner say this years ago that he's reading an old uh, German or Russian uh, theology book. And they said, the commentator said, the reason Jesus used the sick of mine tree was because Peter asked him, how many times do I need to forgive? And he said, uh, could I make a suggestion? How about seven times? How many of you like to suggest to the Lord? How about seven times? That's pretty generous. <laughs> then Jesus throws in 70 times seven, 490 times. 
So he said this about, say to that root of bitterness. It's called the sycamine tree. He said it has several characteristics. Number one, that uh, it is uh, the wood that is used for caskets. And second of all, um, the fruit of the sycamine tree is very bitter. And it is only eaten by poor people. And the fruit is actually, uh, it is pollinated, that tree is pollinated with the stinger of a wasp. And it only grows in dry areas. And it must have a complicated root system that goes deep. And it, uh, that root system goes far, far reaching effect. So that means when you have bitterness or unforgiveness in your life, it has a root system that affects more than you know. Number two, it can actually hinder your faith from working, which means there could be poverty. In other words, you're not going to get the best results from your faith. And number three, if you hold on to that, actually even uh, medical science says that there is a cause of cancer that medical science can never discover. That many times there's a root of bitterness, unforgiveness that can cause sickness and disease in your body. So Jesus said, get over it fast. Paul said, don't even let the sun go down on your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. One translation says, don't let the sun go down finding you nursing a grudge. Are y'all still here? Yeah. So in this area, walking in love, whoo, I see some of y'all are already getting happy. <laughs> don't run right now. Don't be rolling on the floor and stuff like that. I know you want to right now, but just hold it just a second until I get this, this finished with it. Amen. So when it comes to walking in love and walking in forgiveness, most people think they're doing better than they're actually doing. Not me, of course, but to others. <laughs> oh, Lord. So this 1 Corinthians 13 <laughs> was written by the Apostle Paul, right? And it's probably one of the, the greatest of all of his writings and is uh, in classic literature uh, uh, very famous for description of love. And most spiritual people actually um, try to get people to their strong points. But P.C. Nelson said love was not really God's uh, Paul's strong point, it was the area that God had to deal with him on and give him revelation on. And when he got revelation on it, right, then he was able to grow and actually wrote 1 Corinthians 13. So y'all want to read it? All right, let's read it. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, talking about walking in the God kind of love. I can tell you what happened after Dad Hagen told us to stand up. Anybody want to know what happened? When I stood up, and I freely forgave, within 30 days, a harvest of blessing hit me so hard and so fast. Amen. And there was someone else, uh, a particular minister that had been a friend of mine, said something about me, kind of made me mad. Boy, I picked up the phone. I was going to call him. I said, I'm going to tell you something, buddy. <laughs> if you want to talk to me, I'll be over. And the Lord said, you put the phone down, and you forgive. I went, all right, I freely forgive. <laughs> I didn't really feel like it. It took a while for the feelings to show up, right? Amen. And so within just a few weeks, that guy called me up, asked me to his church. I preached on Sunday, gave me $50,000. So I said, whoo, it's just better to have the 50000 <laughs> How many of y'all rather have the 50000 than to tell somebody off? I'd just rather have the 50000 So on 1 Corinthians 13, then we're just, for time's sake, we're just going to read verse 4 through 8, and we're going to read it in the Amplified Bible. This is the women's Bible because it has more words, so we're going to read it in the Amplified Bible. <laughs> Billy Brim's favorite translation. <laughs> just, just kidding. Love Billy Brim. Now, are you ready? We're going to get the characteristics of walking in the God kind of love. Amplified Bible says, love endures long and is patient and kind. 
Love never is envious nor boils over with jealousy. It is not boastful or vainglorious. It does not display itself haughtily. It is not conceited, arrogant, and inflated with pride. It is not rude or unmannerly. It does not act unbecomingly. Love, God's love in us does not insist on its own rights or its own way, for it is not self-seeking. It is not touchy or fretful or resentful. The King James says it is not provoked. That means it's not constantly irritated or angry. It is not touchy or fretful or resentful. It takes no account of the evil done to it, and it pays no attention to a suffered wrong. It does not rejoice at injustice and unrighteousness, but it rejoices when right and truth prevail. Love, and God's love, the God kind of love. Love bears up under anything and everything that comes. It is ever ready to believe the best of every person. Its hopes are fadeless under all circumstances. It endures everything without weakening, and love never fails. You're watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. God not only commands us to love one another, but He has given us the love to do it with. God's love is in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Anytime you feel mistreated, you know the devil is working on you. Walking in the God kind of love is our greatest challenge, but also our greatest reward. Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 13 a description of the love of God. It is often called the definition of the God kind of love and explains the way God loves us. In Mark Hankins' book, Love the Secret to Success, he explains how the greatest quest in life should be walking in the God kind of love. This book also has many translations of 1 Corinthians 13 that will help you renew your mind to the love of God. You can't grow in God without growing in love. You will also receive the brand new CD set, The Royal Law, Understanding the Love of God. Pastor Mark teaches, as we practice speaking and responding with love, our faith will grow and we will walk in victory. Faith works by love. Your gift of any amount will help Mark and Jenna Hankins train believers worldwide. Our vision is for believers to catch the spirit of faith, learn who they are in Christ, and become strengthened by the move of the Holy Spirit. Your love seed will also help us complete our new Mark Hankins Ministries Conference Center. This conference center will help us distribute the word more effectively through conferences and serve as our new television studio. For your gift of any amount, you will receive the book, Love the Secret to Success, and the four CD set, The Royal Law, Understanding the Love of God. You can also download the MP3s of these messages in our app for free. Please call 318-767-2001 or visit markhankins.org. Thank you, World Mission Partners. Together we can, together we will. You cannot grow in God without growing in love. Thank you so much for joining us for the program today. We trust that you were challenged, but you were also encouraged to walk in His love. My parents wanna get this message to you today because we know it is life changing. We wanna get this love, the secret to success to you for your gift of any amount. All you have to do is call the number on the screen or you can visit markhankins.org. I'm Alicia Hankins Moran, have a great day. We wanna thank all the Mark and Trina Hankins Ministries partners Amen. who have made this ministry possible. Praise the And Lord. the word is working mightily here. For over five decades, our desire has been to teach foundational biblical truths to believers around the world. Now, like never before, we see an acceleration of that assignment and are determined to take the message of faith to as many nations possible, seeing lives, churches, and nations transformed by the Word of God. We've been to over 50 countries and have ministered the Word and the Holy Spirit in conferences, churches, and Bible schools. Some of these places we go to again and again, and the seed of the Word is still growing today. Our assignment is to distribute the word on every avenue possible. 
broadcasting on TV, websites, social media, the app, and through publishing our books and CDs. We know if we do our part, God will do His part and make sure the Word lands at the right place at the right time. In the last days, the printed page will be the most effective distribution of the gospel. The stories of people receiving our books in remote places around the world fuels our vision to do what the Lord has called us to do. People are receiving our books deep in the heart of Africa, Vietnam, Papua New Guinea, the Philippines, Iran, and Pakistan, and so many other places. Our books are currently translated in many languages and distributed in even more countries. Our vision is to have our books translated into a hundred different languages. Getting the written word in the hands of pastors and believers around the world is paramount to igniting the faith of generations to come. The books can go much further than we can. Partners, we ask you to continue to stand and believe with us that the Lord will continue to open the doors to new countries for our books to be distributed. Not only have we seen the faithfulness of God in the distribution of the books, but the television and media ministry has also accelerated as we recently launched out into daily television. We are now on the Victory Channel, VTN, and the Word Network, and are reaching a potential of 150 million homes worldwide. We desire to continue distributing the Word more efficiently. One way we are doing this is through building our brand new Mark Hankins Ministries Conference Center. This conference center will help us minister the Word more effectively through conferences and will also serve as our new television studio. We're also streaming our In Christ International Bible College around the world via Facebook and YouTube. This allows anyone in any country to catch the spirit of faith and study the Word at their convenience. With the advances of modern technology, the supernatural acceleration, and the new open doors, we are reaching more people today than ever before. And that's because of you. It's because of our partners that we're able to accomplish the assignment God has for us. When everyone pulls together, we will see amazing things happen for the kingdom of God. We thank you for your continued partnership. We could not do what we're doing without our partners. Together we can, together we will. Thank you, World Missions Partners. Join Mark and Trina Hankins for an hour of powerful teaching live Monday through Friday on Facebook and YouTube at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Everyone can join In Christ Bible School. Catch the spirit of faith and move the mountains in your life. Watch live wherever you are and learn who you are in Christ. That's live at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. The Mark Hankins Ministries app makes it easy for you to watch the latest TV broadcast. Listen to unlimited full sermons by Mark and Trina. Read our daily devotional and stay connected with upcoming events. Download the app today on any smart device. Simply search Mark Hankins Ministries. Start feeding your faith at any time and anywhere. Thank you for watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. For more information on how to build your faith, visit markhankins.org. You can access many free word resources to help you find who you are in Christ. Stay connected with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.